Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Predatory Exotics. Today we are going to be showing you all around Norris's new enclosure. This is our uh, Spurthide tortoise, the Greek tortoise Norris. Um, he's been outside for the summer. You saw his enclosure tour for you saw his enclosure tour for the outside, um, and if you've been watching our reptile roundup videos, you'll have noticed we're making a new enclosure in our understairs cupboard. It's finally finished with all the lighting set up and everything all decorated nicely, like you can see behind me. We're going to do a whole enclosure tour, show you everything step by step, how I built it into the wall, as well as how I built the actual enclosure if you want to do one yourself. So without further ado, let's get in to showing you the setup. So this is Norris's setup. It's actually, if we take a step back, uh, it's inside a cupboard. Um, we basically did this to save space. Sort of, we wanted a built-in enclosure that'd be really cool. So underneath is still all storage. And then up the top is a mini enclosure. You wouldn't even tell it's a cupboard because I think we've decorated it really nicely and I'm really proud of the project. Um, so if we start with how we actually fitted it up here off the ground, um, we put brackets into the wall, um, so there's brackets into this brick wall here on the left and then on the right we did brackets into the studs and then there's bars across which support the actual weight of that. There's 80 kilogram weight bearing on each side so it's more than enough to keep this guy safe. Um, and then we basically went to B&Q and got a load of boards that we cut up. They do them quite nicely there so the bottom is actually one pre-done sheet and then we cut another board in half to make each side and then use the offcuts to make the ends um, and it's about four foot by two foot so it's nice and big uh, he's got lots of room all the way along and um, we've still got to put more inside as you can see for substrate we've used beach chips um, which we've never used before but he seems to, he's been in here a couple of days now um, and they're definitely working well, um, keeping it nice and clean. And then we just got a couple, we got the water dish here um, and then this food dish here. And we've been putting them in here overnight when it's raining because the weather's not been great recently. Um, and he seems to like it. He does run around a lot um, and he's scratched up the sides a little bit if you can see. Um, so basically back to moving back to how we set this up. We drilled it all in each side. Um, and then used wood filler and on all the cracks. This meant that it is nice and tight, um, watertight, so all the cracks are nice and sealed. And no moisture is going to get in there. And then for the paint, we actually used exterior masonry paint. Um, it's granacryl sandstone, if you want to know the colour. Really pleased with how it turned out. Love the colour. It's nice arid colour. Um, and it's sort of 10 year weatherproof. Um, so hopefully it's going to last nice and long. So it should keep the enclosure nice and tidy and should last as long, um, should last a long time as well. So because we had extra wood as well, um, we actually did a couple off cuts. Um, we put them here to make an extra shelf. Um, so we batten just a bit of wood underneath along the wall into the studs, which is what this shelf rests on. And then we went through all the decorating. So this is just aquarium gravel that we put along the whole shelf, um, glued it with wood glue, and then glued on all these succulents. These are just from Amazon. They're quite a nice little pack. I think you get like 16 in a pack. Um, but we glued all them in here, as well as around the edge. So all around the edge has got, this is two packs. So this is one pack that goes around the edge. So we've got loads of different succulents all the way along, and then all the way along the back just to tie the whole enclosure together. And all these ones, um, they're so bright. There's such a wide variety of different succulents in the pack as well, um, but they are really nice. And they do look quite naturalistic because they're slightly flocked as well. Um, and then if we move on to the walls, you can see we've used the exact same um, color on the walls, done sort of like a hilly arid landscape onto the walls so it just blends in with the enclosure. And then for the sky, we just use normal wall paint. Uh, I think this is duck egg or new duck egg. Um, we thought this would resemble the sky the most. And then it's quite a nice contrast between that and the sandy colour. And then we've just hidden the brackets as well. We've used these hanging succulents that we got off Amazon as well. One on the back there, one on the front, just to hide those. And then one in the corner, just to tie it all together again. 
Um, and these ones are really good. That one's drilled into the wall, um, but these ones we just plucked off and then paste, and then we just placed it inside the racking holes. So that so that just brings a little bit of greenery to the environment and the habitat. Uh, it makes it look a bit more naturalistic because we can't do. We were going to do a bioactive sort of thing on here with some plants with a dripper tray underneath, um, but it turned out just to be easier just to sort of decorate it. I'm really glad it turned out how it did. And then as sort of like a last minute thing. We were going to put a light, but we didn't know where to put it. Um, so we had these shelves and these brackets that we already had. So we painted them blue to sort of blend in with the sky. And then we've got a UVB strip light underneath, which gives him his UVB and his lighting. So this is actually an Arcadia Pro T5 UVB kit. Uh, it's the 6%, so it's more than strong enough. Um, they need anywhere from 2 to 6%. Um, and he goes outside anyway all throughout the summer. So he gets his UVB from outside as well as in here now as well. And then up on the top, if we move on from Norris's enclosure, um, we have these this shelf up here now, which the light is drilled into. And we decided to use it as a scorpion shelf. So I've got my two Asian forest scorpions up here. Um, they're doing nice and happy. And our Israeli desert gold as well, we put that one up here. So we've got a scorpion shelf. Um, eventually, I don't know what to do with this. Might do some bigger enclosures on here, not just the tubs. So maybe a glass Exoterra Nano, and then have stuff like the Israeli Desert Gold, like desert species that are going to blend in with stuff like this. Maybe even try and get something like an Italian Scorpion that would cross over its native range with the Testudo Gratia. That would be really awesome because it's a whole environment then. And then we can explain that how these animals code hat would cohabitate in the wild. So really happy how this turned out. We've never really done any DIY custom enclosures um, and this for our first project has turned out really well. Um, so obviously we'd never really drilled or like cut any enclosures to make it ourselves. So when we drilled all this, um, we did obviously come across a couple of mistakes. So with these screws, I put the screws into the side. Um, they are too a little bit too big, so the wood did split a little bit. Um, but you can fix that with wood filler. So when I wood fillered the cracks down all the seams and along the bottom, um, just wood fillered where the wood split a little bit. As well as sort of, I don't know if you can see, there's a slight raised bump. Um, sometimes when it splits, obviously the screws were too big, um, but we did pilot hole it um, and then put the screw in. So it's nice and secure, but obviously there's this little bump, which is a little bit annoying, but totally fit for purpose and did really well. Um, and it's nice and solid, really pleased with the finish on it. Um, as you can tell, he's been in here um, and he has scratched up the sides a little bit where he runs around um, the whole enclosure. So we're obviously gonna see how it turns out um, because he has been in here a few days. He scratched it up a little bit and that's where his food bowl is. So he gets a bit of food on side, on this side here, but it should be super strong wearing because it is outdoor paint. Um, so I'm going to see how long it lasts. If not, we've got extra. We can do another coat. <coughs> um, but he will have to be outside because the fumes are going to need to wear off before we put them back inside. So when we actually did all these succulents around the edge, um, instead of just basically when they come, they come with like a big stem on it. Um, so we cut that down, drilled a small pilot hole down into the enclosure in the wood and then stuck them and glued them in well we didn't glue them in the end because they were quite tight but we stuck them inside so they're nice and secure um, and they go all the way along drilled in these ones we just cut the stem off completely and glued them on with wood glue um, and then with these succulents that hang down we made sure that they hang down to cover the racking but they don't go into the enclosure because we don't want norris to eat them because these are plastic plants um, and any greenery or leafage or flowers he's going to try and eat um, he hasn't seemed to want to try and eat them yet. Um, he's just been scratching at the walls, but he hasn't tried to reach up and eat them, which is a good sign because we always keep this bowl nice and full of leafy greens when he's inside. Um, so we shouldn't need to try and eat all these succulents. Then one thing to note when you are doing this Arcadia UVB kit, um, it does come with some tiny raw plugs as well as some screws. Um, but luckily we had some extra screws because the screws they give you for this kit are really long and they would have gone through my shelf into the top um, so luckily I had some smaller ones so you can see there's a bracket here and a bracket at the end 
Um, we use some tiny screws from B&Q to screw these in um, instead of the ones that they gave you. So it might be worth, if you are looking at doing something like this, get some extra tiny screws um, when you pick up your other screws for all around because they do do pick and mix, um, which is something I've found that's really cool at B&Q. You can do pick and mix screw packs. Um, so there's different size packs and then different size screws. You fill up your packet. Um, so that's how we got these ones and we got them and then we got the ones for all the racking to go into the side. Um, means you don't have to buy loads of individual packs. You can just buy what you need, a little mixed bag, and it's really good. And then the beat ships, they're really well. I, um, I read some reviews on them. Um, they were a little bit dusty when I put them in, um, but they do work really well, and he seems to like it. Um, his feet do sink a little bit, so it takes him a little bit of time to sort of dig through the substrate. But he has buried in it, he's kicked it up. We just need to build a hide now. Um, currently using just like a cardboard box hide. But basically we'll try and build one that put, we can put loads of straw on hay uh, or even shredded newspaper. That means he can bury himself inside that box um, as opposed to just being out in the open. And then when it comes to the winter time, which is what this is mainly designed for, he's outside during the summer. But in the winter he needs somewhere where he's going to hibernate. So all the lights will go off. Um, it'll be nice and dark. It'll be cooler inside this cupboard and he can hibernate in here nice and for however long he chooses. Um, he'll be happy in there and that's what the main purpose of this was. So really pleased with how it turned out. Um, just give you a nice look round because the finish on it's really nice. Um, really impressive with it. And the only two things to add are probably the hide that we're going to put inside. Probably hang like a cuttlefish bone or something. Um, never really given them to him when he was young but not really recently. Um, so probably get one of them instead of sprinkling it or in addition to sprinkling the calcium onto his dinner And then the last project would probably be to try and cut the door um, Do like a stable door so I can keep my cupboard closed But then he can be open and we can open the two halves separately Something that is a little bit more work, but something I think will be really good as well as doing a information sign on the front maybe here um, it'll tell you all about the species, all about Norris himself and his backstory. Um, because if you don't know about Norris, go see some of our other videos. But he was originally from Drusilla's and then came to me, which is one of our local zoos. Um, so it'd be good to have a bit about the species itself as well as him and his personality. Um, that'd be great to have on the front for when people come and see him. Um, but for now... That is the rest of the enclosure. So I hope you have enjoyed this video of me showing you around Norris's new setup. Um, I tried to explain how I did it um, along the way, but I didn't want to do like a step-by-step -step process of when I was building it because it was my first project building something like this. I didn't want to film it, do it wrong, and then you get the wrong idea of how to do it if you want to do it yourself. Um, but I hope I've explained anything. If you don't understand any sort of process that we did, just leave a comment down below on how any questions you've got on it or if you've got any improvements that you think we can make obviously i know i need to do the hide um, and a few more enrichment items inside the enclosure but if you've got any improvements of what we could do obviously the shelf was a good touch but if you think we could put other shelves or other hanging stuff or a secondary lighting system uh, leave it in the comments down below and we'll take it into account and we might even look up one of your ideas if you have enjoyed this video please leave a like do that comment down below and subscribe to us here at Predatory Exotics to see more of Norris the tortoise running around his new enclosure as well as all the other animals in our collection and don't forget to check out Instagram for those daily updates as well as seeing all the videos here on YouTube. But for now guys, we'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.